Welcome back, my fellow thermal extraction enthusiasts. Today we are here with a product from cannabis hardware called the Flower Pot. As we're going on this adventure of ball vapes or non-ball vapes for some companies, this device has always been looming in the background. We started with some of the simpler ones, like the mini nail flower wand, which right out of the box is a great device for people getting into the space or someone that's a weekend user. Then we jumped over to the screwball, which is just this intense, huge, hard hitting vape that again, right out of the box, no customization, just rips. Then we come to this weird amalgamation of parts and pieces, and I've actually been a little intimidated to do this content because there are just so many parts and pieces, which is one of the things that makes Cannabis Hardware's Flower Pot ecosystem really cool, but also makes it really hard to break into. Not only that, this ecosystem is, well, not exactly cheap. While being at the top of the line type of equipment, you're gonna pay for it. And you're gonna have to do some research and some figuring out to learn exactly what setup you are looking for and what setup you need. So in this video, we're just gonna go over some of the basics and not really deep dive too much into what each part does and how it affects your experience. I just wanna show you the parts to at least help you get a handle on the flower pot. Let's start off with this. Now it is in a fancy metal box, but underneath it just looks like this. This is just a, an accessory that Cannabis Hardware offers, which is a nice cage system and allows you to attach things like this heat stand if you need a place to put the hot head. Not to mention, it just looks very futuristic and cool. It was something I got just purely for aesthetics. The other thing the heat cage does is it gives you a place to put your carb cap and some other accessories, but we'll go over that in a minute. You have your choice of Arbor RDK or their other PID. It doesn't really matter. They both function similarly. I chose to go with the Arbor RDK DK because of some features like boost that it has, but the other just normal cannabis hardware PID can be used with a smart plug, whereas the Auber PID cannot. So now that we've talked about the PID a little bit, which is what powers the device, and if you want to see what, how a ball vape works, I talk about it a little bit in my flower wand video, so you can check it out. But on a base level, the PID heats this coil, which is inside the head. I'll show you that in a second. And then once this whole situation gets hot, you pull the cool air through the head over the hot media inside the head down over your flower. The head is where all the magic happens. And these are the two main heads that cannabis hardware offers. They do have some other variants like the F22, which are newer to last year, but we're not gonna go over those as these two are really the standard ones that they have. Let's talk about the top side. On the top here, you have what they refer to as the B1. All it is is a nut with a mesh screen that does nothing except filters in the air. Then the other top side, you have the B2 dish. And what this allows you to do is actually use this as an e-nail to do concentrates, as well as use the bottom part to thermally extract flour. So now that we've talked about the two top parts, let's go ahead and go inside. The internals to both are the same and they are interchangeable. You could play Lego pieces to switch these around depending on your mood or experience. I built two separate devices that I could use with the same PID depending on what I was trying to achieve. But inside each one underneath the top nut is the coil and underneath the coil is the bottom part. And underneath the coil is either going to be the diffuser, which is this one, or the injector, which is this other head that I'll show you in a second. And both of the heads have a space inside where you put media, whether it's rubies, cubic zirconia, or sick balls. And we talked about that a little bit in some of my other videos, so I don't want to go too much into it. But changing the media inside and the size and shape of the media not only affects heat retention, but also affects airflow. So this is all leads to the part of where you can really dial in this system to your exact needs. So let's get this rebuilt. I usually just uh, slip the top part into the coil like this, set it over the bottom. And once I have it seated like that, I will pick it up and actually screw the bottom side while holding the top side. That way I don't have any risk of spilling beads. So now that we see, see a side shot of this, you can see the difference between the diffuser head on the bottom and the injector head on this bottom. These serve a little bit of a different purpose. Essentially, 
The same thing, they funnel the air over the dry herb. The injector is gonna be more along the style of something like an herborizer, whereas a diffuser is gonna be more the style of the flower wand, the screw ball, and a lot of other ball vapes on the market. The injector head funnels the air in a little more without heating up the outside of the chamber so much. Leads to more restrictive potter Draw. In order to work with the head, you will need a bowl of some sort. They do offer glass bowls. What Cannabis Hardware is known for is this object here called the shovel head bowl. This is a four part bowl system. The parts are the handle, the joint, which can be switched out to any male or female 14, 18, 10, any size you need for what glass piece you have, the bowl part, and then the screen inside. The way that this is held in here is just by tension, the handle screwing into the side. So again, a very customizable system, but a lot of parts that you need to know and also what you need them for. So it can get a little complicated really fast. So now that you have your bowl and your head, we can show you how the two interact with each other. The diffuser fits over the bowl just like this and creates this big airflow chamber. So if you like something with big wide open airflow, this is the setup for you. And I really like the B1 because it's just nothing but airflow and makes a really good experience. How the injector goes is it goes inside leading to a more strict airflow where the heat is just channeled in through the center of the flower. The other thing with this setup is if you fill the bowl too much, I've noticed that the flower really compresses on the outside, which is why I don't really like using the injector for flower because it's just too close to where the flower is. So then you ask, what would I use the injector for? For me, because I have it with the B2 dish, I'm basically just using this like an e-nail now instead of using it for flower. I have my setup where I set the injector directly into the joint and this way now I can take dabs without using a torch or having to worry about messing up my quartz. I like using this setup for things like temple ball hash or other water full melt hashes that are just really messy with material wreak havoc on my quartz. And because this is an injector that's 18 millimeter, I can just stick it in a joint and not have to worry about running it through a bowl in order to use my B2 dish. Then if I'm just doing flour, I'll switch over to my B1 head and use the diffuser that just sets over like this, which is really, really nice and a nice even roast when I'm doing dry herb. So we're gonna go ahead, turn this on and get this heated up to temperature. And that's one of the things that is actually a little more difficult about the cannabis hardware stuff is setting the temperature to the right temperature is a little hard because you're gonna go much hotter than what your actual vape temperature is. Because you have to think that the temperature it's setting is the temperature of the coil itself. And then when you draw in all of that fresh air over the coil down to your flower, that is your vape temperature. So there's a little bit of math to be done. Whereas with the flower wand and the screw ball, they've set their PIDs to match what your actual vaporization temperature is versus what your coil temperature. Is. I'm not really sure what their the exact formula to tell you guys is, but there are ranges that we operate in. For the B1, I will go anywhere from the 550 range up to the 615 range, depending on what piece I'm using and what kind of mood I'm in. For the B2 and using it as an e-nail, I tend to start at the 600 range and go up from there depending on what type of concentrate I'm using and again, what piece I'm using. Because of how much the airflow affects how much the media cools down on the inside, that's all things I need to take into account with what rig I'm using and what setup. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this to 569 and let it heat up. You might be wondering why I had this little pair of tweezers here. It's because when you're screwing the heads on and off, this is a really good way to deal with all those little rubies when you need to place them inside the head and they might fall into the chamber of the head. So while this is heating up, let's talk about something that I brought up earlier, which is the carb cap. So this device here for the B2, it's the same thing as when you're taking a quartz dab. If you were to take a dab with this, you would wait until it's hot. You would use a li your little dab tool on the end here to grab your concentrate, put it in the dish and cap it up like that to hit your dab. And what I really like about these carb caps is they do auto spin pearls. But one thing I've noticed is that if I get the pearls spinning really fast and then I pull off the cap, they actually fly out of the dish a little bit. So if you do this method, just make sure that you wait for the pearls to stop when you are using the B2 dish. The other thing I, I'll talk about a little bit while this heats up is this device you see here. This is just another version of their heat stand, somewhere for you to put the head while it's heating up or between hits when it's hot. And lastly, 
a note on the shovel head bowl with metal. While this is an interesting concept, this metal bowl does come with some drawbacks. If you use it in a normal frosted joint, it does have a high chance of getting stuck. Not only that, but what I've noticed is this metal, where it makes contact with the frosted joint over repeated use will leave a black ring on your piece. So if you have a really nice heady glass, think about using an adapter or something like that to protect your piece. What I found was this nifty bowl that I actually had from my use with the Terp Torch, which is an unfrosted injector bowl. So what I do is I just use this as a buffer between my nice rigs and the metal part. That way there's no extra screen or restriction of the airflow and it's a nice unfrosted joint that doesn't stick to the metal as much. We're gonna let this heat up. It usually takes around five minutes or so to get this up to a good vape temperature. All right, now that we've let it heat soak a little bit and really you wanna leave it on for like five to 10 minutes to get the media inside of the head nice and toasty. That way when you draw over it and bring all that cool air over the media, it doesn't cool down so much. So now I have some nice flour loaded in my chamber here. And one of my favorite, favorite things to do with the B1 is actually something called a double decker, which is where you take a little bit of hash. And for me, I'm gonna take some temple ball hash, which is my absolute favorite. And I made a little pancake that I'll just set right in the middle there. I'll leave it sit on top for just a second. Usually the flower pot comes with a metal handle, but that's just another thing of the customization of all of the flower pot stuff is I ended up with this nice short wood handle, which makes this a very compact, nice situation. And for hash, I leave the head sit on there for just a minute before I start inhaling, but now it's all ready to go. Let's give it a rip. This is one of those setups for me that's not very harsh, but just the crazy amount of terpenes that this produces on this type of setting is just so intense that you get this like really great feeling and a very interesting higher chest cough just because of how spicy the terpenes are. See, after a first hit, it's fully melted all that hash on top and not really pyrolyzed anything. I could give it a stir, but for sake of this video, I'm not going to because I wanna show you just how lazy you can be with this device. So now that I've given the head a second to recoil and get back to temperature, soak up some more heat, let's give it another rip. All right. I'm gonna give it a little stir just to see if it's done, but it tastes pretty done. You know what? Let's give it one more solid rip. Yeah, that tasted done for sure. Let's get my handy dandy mixette out and check out that ABV. So while I know a lot of you out there would go a lot darker, this is a good place for me. This is right when it starts to taste like a little bit like popcorn, and I've gotten all of the important bits out of it that I want to without touching that CVN too much. What I like here is that it's all very even and no bits of pyrolization and no big color differences. Very, very even. That's one of the big things about the B1 that I like is that it is a super evenly heated vape. Thanks for watching. That's it for the Cannabis Hardware Flower Pot series. If you guys like it, let me know in the comments and we'll do a deep dive into the B2, the B1, and all of that other goodness. The settings on the RDK, whatever you guys wanna see, just let me know. And as always, stay lifted and thanks for watching. Psst, come hang out with us on Discord.